Welcome to Liberty Hat Podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by being interrupted by your co host <laughs> and also how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues. During this episode, we will tackle two topics, gambling and prostitution. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how well my co-host doesn't interrupt me and how I engage with him today, and applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics despite being constantly interrupted and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local libertarian City Council candidate, professional interrupter, Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb, or just Tubb. Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for this season of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one or several of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book, Introduction, Introduction of the Libertarian <laughs> Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll be entertained about how informed you will not become about how libertarians view gambling and prostitution. With that, let's dive right in. Tub, how are so, we today? I'm guessing right now it's the book's fault for not it going is, in the right direction. If I can fault. get blamed for all the other things that you have going on, it's going to be the book's fault. It's going to be the microphone's fault. It will not right. be DL's fault. No, what you're not saying. at all. Fair I enough. am not. Have you not spoken with my wife? I am not to blame for anything. This seems legit. Goes. That seems okay. We're so, good with that. All right. But uh, today, topics, folks, we're talking. Hopefully just talking. Hopefully we don't show you any examples of gambling or prostitution. However, I am taking a gamble by continuing to invite this That's man true. over. That's real life. Okay, so now what you usually do right here, because some of us have to know what's, going, what's supposed to be going on during this time. You're supposed to show us what the book says. Right. About right, right. I, I was busy so drinking there, what, hoping that you would so I just, kind of fill in there. I just no, did. can't. All right, I just, you know what? So gambling and prostitution. So in the book, they were together. Yes, they were. They were a single they were together. topic. Together. It was a single topic, but they are two different topics. Okay. Because just because you do one doesn't mean you do the other. I understand that. Well, actually, I take that back. If you, you're hey, engaging if with a prostitute, you're gambling. you might be gambling. You're gambling. It depends gambling. on what you got going on. You're taking on, right? a risk, yeah. If you're a married man, you are gambling. Yo, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? I, I, and, and, and go ahead, read that, and then I, I feel like I got to explain something. Okay, so okay. here it is on the screen. We've got it now. Gambling and prostitution. Here's what it says from the book. Remember, folks. What we're doing is we're expanding on what Mr. Benedict says in this book. He only gives a little snippet, and then we take it, and we run with it and see if we can just kind of give you something more to work with, whether you're a libertarian who might like to better explain it, or you're a non-libertarian, and you're like, what in the world? Why would libertarians support gambling and prostitution? So here's what he says. Gambling and prostitution should be legal everywhere. I'm not saying they're smart things to do, but when a person gambles, he or she does not violate anyone else's rights, Ditto for prostitution. As Lysander Spooner said, vices are not crimes. Awesome. Okay. So now you got something to say because you really, I, he was really excited to talk about prostitution. I really don't understand why he's a pastor and all, but let's see. That, okay. That, Cause you said it right there. All right. So here's what happens. I feel like I, I have to give some sort of disclaimer, 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 um, because we cover like, we're going to do prostitution and stuff mm -hmm. and we've done other topics in the past. And I, I feel like I always kind of need to explain if we're not here, I tend to explain to people that, Hey, listen, um, I don't condone this behavior. Right. Like I, 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 in no way, I don't take part in it. I don't want, and and I also say that as Christians, we don't have the luxury. Like we don't get to say, well, I'm going to do this because no, 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 no. If you come to me and you tell me you're a Christian, you do not mm -hmm. get to take part in these type of things. Right. And I always think, I, I don't think I make that maybe clear enough on here Okay. that, that I kind of like, Hey, listen, I, I am for other people going, having the right to go do it. Like right. I joked the other night and I said, listen, I am the best libertarian because I, I'm not pushing these things so that I can go do them. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not 
I'm not protecting people's freedom so that I can go be a part of them, right. which is what people tend to do. When it's something they want to do, they'll fight for it. Right. What I'm trying to do is to fight for the people who don't see things my way. Right. Like, I'm not going to do these things, but I want you right. to be able to go and do it if you want. Gotcha. So that's kind of my disclaimer. My disclaimer is that I will try to defend other people's rights to do this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I personally don't think it's a great idea. Gotcha. Okay. You know, I don't remember any disclaimers on other stuff, so I feel like you got something to hide. Not at all. Uh, but no, but you know, it's funny. No, because we do have these conversations. And, right. and I and I, I was like, you know what? I don't know if I mentioned enough that right. I'm not doing this. Right. And I'm not. And, and I also draw the line that like if we're in the church, I'll be like, oh, no, church yeah. people. No, no. Because we do have a bit of an overlap with some people inside of our church and some people mm -hmm. are part of libertarians. Right. And they'll kind of be like, well, how are you do? I said, whoa, whoa, you understand that as Christians now, that's not going to apply to us. Right. We don't get to go do those things. Right. And, and I think that's a very critical point here is to point out that there are things which for which we will be against, and you might make even a religious argument against it, right? Like, say, Oh, most definitely, like yes. War, going to war. You yep. might say, hey, look, I think there's a time and a place for war, and I think I can at least, you know, maybe even perfectly match it up. Right. You know, my, my, you know, match up my views on war as a libertarian with my views on war as a Christian. Mm -hmm. But then there are other ideas which it's not so easy to match them up. And today is a perfect distinct. example of and that. Today will be a perfect example of that because they are vices, gambling and prostitution. Yes. And um, so which one do we want to tackle first? Uh, well, I'm just the extra guy here. Right. Remember? So it's... I which... mean, you got any, you know, any, any immediate thoughts? Like, um, Okay. Well, you know what? Okay. So what he puts in there is kind of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, these aren't the best things to be going and doing. Okay. Like, I think we need to make that very clear that just because we're like, okay, this, you have the freedom to, we're not trying to... We're not trying to normalize it. Okay. We're not trying to suggest that we want everybody to jump in and do these things. So like, why would you be in support of somebody else going and gambling? Or why would you be in support of somebody else going and engaging in prostitution? Okay. Outside of my Christian faith. Correct. Okay. So gambling. I, I've gone gambling before. Support he, meaning he's not suggesting you do it. No, I don't know. But saying I will defend your right. If you choose different. to. Yeah. Like if you right. choose. Like I'm not saying, hey. Prostitutes and gambling. Everybody go do it. Right. No, but if you're in that situation where you found this is the best for me, mm -hmm. you, you know, if, if you're a single mom and you're trying to get whatever your situation might be, I, I'm not going to stop you if you feel like that's what's best for you. Right. Do I want your do? Do we want our wives or our daughters or right. no? Absolutely not. We don't want right. that. But this is where they are. Now, here's what happens. So if, if we take, are we take? We start with gambling. Okay, okay. Start gambling. so w with gambling, I I've gone gambling before. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, I even as a Christian, I, we go different things. You know, if we happen to go to a place where there's casinos or whatever, like I'm not right. against it. Now, I, I don't gamble much, and that has nothing to do with religious beliefs or anything. Um, I just like my money. Right. And I don't like just handing it over for no reason. Right. To me, that's what gambling does. Right. <laughs> and we actually, where I grew up in Connecticut, uh, we have a couple major casinos right there. Mm -hmm. um, it's the Foxwoods Casino. And that was the big one. They really started, um, when they started doing it, they were the largest casino in the Western Hemisphere. And I right. lived 15 minutes from it. Right. And, and so we've also seen the perils of it. Right. Like, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens inside of gambling. Right. And I'm not talking about the other stuff. I'm talking about just the losing stuff. Like they would actually have an area right there where you could truly could sell your car to them. Or you could have the deed to their house. It's right there. Like Ooh, when you would intense. walk in the main part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And they will. They'll take it. They have no problem with that. And, and I think that that's what we always have to be cautious of right. is going too far with it. Right. But I think there's nothing wrong if, you know, if you have 20 bucks, you're like, hey, I want to go play slot machines or I want to mm -hmm. go sit at a table. I think that's perfectly fine. Right. So to me, I don't look at gambling. I don't, I, I think you have to know your own limits. Right. Like I, once again, I, if you're gambling too much, whether it's scratch off tickets right. or lottery, whatever it happens to be, if you're not paying your bills. Right. And you're not taking care of your family and those type of things. I'm like, hey, dude, you got a problem. Right. Like you need to stop that. But I think that if you go, hey, listen, you know, each week I spend five bucks and I buy a couple of lotto tickets. And, right. You know, my, my bills are paid perfectly fine. Have yeah. at it. Um, the first time that I ever gambled, mm -hmm. like actually went to a casino. Right. Was on my honeymoon for my first marriage. Okay. And neither one of us were much for gambling. I've always been kind where'd, of Where'd you go? We went on a cruise. Oh, okay. All right. And I've always been averse to gambling because I grew up with, you know, friends that like to gamble and play games like mm -hmm. in the bathroom or something like yeah. that. And I was always very terrible. And so the very little money that my mom gave me, I always lost. Okay. And I was like, you know what? The heck with this. Uh, right. I, I yep. hate this. You know, I didn't have much money to begin with. And then I had none, after, mm -hmm. you know, even less. And um, so we went down to the casino because we we're on a boat. Yeah. Whatever. 
and we both took 20 bucks. Okay. And we said, when this 20 bucks is gone, we're, we're done. done. We didn't take our wallets, just in case. Yeah, right. You know, because uh, we didn't know if we were going to get wrapped up in it or whatever. Yep. We're like, all right, at least we'll have to, we'll have to break away. Maybe. And maybe you know. then you find something else to do. Yeah. So, or you have time to think about it. Yeah. Oh, we really so shouldn't do this. we went down there and played slot machines. Mm -hmm. And when we were done, we were done. I was like, oh, okay. So it kind of, it was like going to the arcade. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to take my 20 bucks. I'm going to go play some video games. Uh, it wasn't nearly as fun per se. Uh, cause I, I'm better at video games. Oh, okay. So sure. I can, uh -huh. I can take a quarter and make it go a little bit further right. than I can the quarter in the slot machine. Yeah. They, they go pretty quick. And, and like, I, I, and then we we're done. We left. Yeah. That and then we like, I, that was one of two times that I did. Second time, uh -huh. went to a riverboat in, in Indiana. Okay. And with my buddy, we spent more time driving there than we did actually at the casino. Okay. And we did, we, him and I basically did the same thing. We were like, we just chose whatever money we were going to take, went in, had fun, left. And that was it. Um, so I treat it very much like going to the to the arcade yeah, you'd... or anywhere where you're gonna like, hey, I'm gonna spend. You know, you go to the zoo, you go to the uh, the theme park. Whatever. Yeah, well, that's what you're choosing to like, do for your I, entertainment. Like go to the movies or whatever. Spend this much money, and, and you know. And, and here's the thing: like I, I remember one time going with my father, and and we played the pie gal poker, but they had pie gal tiles. So mm -hmm. It's like a dominoes type of thing. Um, and my father actually knew it. My father was all about it. And um, so we took me one day and we're sitting there and I really had no idea what I was doing. I'm just like, okay, but they, they wouldn't mind if he kind of looked over and helped me, something right. like that. Even though it's a pretty big casino, they're kind of like, you know. Uh, so I remember I got up $80 and I looked at my dad and said, I'm done. Right. And he's like, no, you're winning. I'm like, no, I'm leaving because I'm up $80. That's huge. Right. right. You, you know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. And he kind of looked at me like, hey, what are you doing? You can't leave. No, no, it's a perfect time to leave. Right. Now, here's the thing. I think this is why we have to be cautious because people will argue the other side of this. They'll go, yeah, but they lost their house. They lost their car. They lost their family because of gambling. Okay. Because they have a problem. Right. Not everybody has that problem. Right. And I think that you're probably going to find most people probably don't. Right. Most people probably aren't the ones you're going to, you know, deed off their house while they're there. Right. Okay. So why would you ruin it for right. the ones that just go as entertainment? Right. Then maybe they get a few extra dollars or they, or they lose $20. Right. Not to mention the jobs that it provides. Right. And all those type of things. So I think that we always have to be cautious that because there's bad, and this is going to cover, this is going to go into prostitution also. Right. That because there are bad situations around it and sometimes it doesn't always play out well. Right. You want to, well, we got to stop that. Right. But why don't you look at, all of it. Look right. at the big picture of it and look at truly the jobs that right. are created because of casinos right. and stuff along those right. lines. Um, and, and so I just kind of look at it and say, you know what? Listen, and, and I think now, I think a lot of these places, they'll put signs up. Hey, gambling mm -hmm. problem. Call this number. Like they're even actively trying to say, hey, don't don't make this a problem. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So I think that I think that we try to overcorrect and mm -hmm. we try to go too far with shut it all down. There's no reason for that because some people have lost everything. Right. And so let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. And you tell me if it's an unfair question to ask. To ask me or people in general? Just in general. Okay. Re regarding this particular topic. Okay. So, the, so let me lay a little bit of background here real, real quick. Okay. Not background, but like a little bit of a, um, uh, let me just kind of pave the way for a moment. So gambling is effectively what people, the, peop the problem that people have is that somebody will go and gamble mm -hmm. and they'll get too involved in it. Right. And then they'll end up, you know, going to loan sharks. Yeah. And, you know, selling their house, mm -hmm. and, you know, or gambling, you know, so much money that they have to sell their house. Right. That's a, they have no way to pay back or whatever, you know, so, that, so they get themselves in trouble and then it impacts their family in a negative way. Right. So what's the difference between, here's my question, what's the difference between that and somebody who goes to work every day and starts seeing that things, the landscape is changing and refuses to adapt? And so they end up getting to the point where their skills, they're no longer needed. Right. And so maybe they can't advance or maybe the company moves on and they have to, you know, they, they get terminated, they get downsized, so on and so forth. Okay. Is there a huge, and maybe it's an unfair question. So, because I look at them and say, it's, it's not really. What's your the, connection between the, those two things? The connection isn't an equal one. This is what, what it's saying is the gambling is a series of choices. Right. Poor choices. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, okay, okay. So you're but making we, we may we tolerate people making poor choices all the time. If it's, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, they just happen to be good choices. Okay. Oh, you went to work and but you didn't advance your skills so that you could uh, like you, remain employed. Uh, you didn't do this so that eventually, when this time came, you were more prepared. They're, right, right, yeah. Like nobody thought. Okay, so up in South Carolina, where uh, my wife's family is, they're all, they all live up there, and, and they all worked in cotton mills. You know, in fabric mills. And, and so they made stuff. That's what they did. Right. But 
that that industry was going away. Right. Like it was slowly going away. Right. And some people didn't adapt well. Right. Now, bear in mind a lot. I don't of even try. No. I mean, like I've seen people there. Like I talked to a guy uh, when I was working in warehousing and went out to one of our facilities in Iowa. And um, there was like nothing. Like you just, mm -hmm. just fields, right? And he he worked for us at a, a, a fastener company. Okay. So we he distributed um, parts to... Um, manufacturers and he was like you know i'd like to get raised blah 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 and he's like i work hard and i'm like okay well working hard is kind of part of your job yeah like that that was in the job description so i don't really <laughs> nothing, nothing special about that i mean I, I you do don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but it's kind of in the job description right? but shouldn't you i've always been happy shouldn't you period <laughs> but then he's like he's like well i'm not going to college and i'm not doing this and i'm not doing that. i'm like okay well you've clearly made a choice yep that all these things are off the table period and i'm like are you in a position, that, you know, to make the choice? And what happens if the choice to not do those things causes you to become in a financial so, situation but, right. later? Yep. How is and, and so maybe how are you going to address that later when you're homeless, living in your car, and stuff right. along those lines? Like when you can see it now, and, and so why I not do something it. about it? And 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 I feel like we don't we we stigmatize the idea of gambling, yes, because of this result, without saying, hey. There was a series of choices, and we. But then we don't do that in other areas. Other areas, like, hey, wait a right. minute, why, why? Yeah, are you gonna are you gonna shut down all these all right. these people because they made bad business right. decisions? Because I look at it, and say people make bad decisions in life in general. Now, I don't necessarily think that we should always stick. But many times, anything. but right, but many times there's a lead up. It's not a right. one time decision. It's not like, Correct. yeah, listen, the person who probably went into the casino didn't walk in, go straight to that thing and say, hey, let me sell my house to you. Right. They probably do that immediately. Right. They probably went through all of. They probably went through maybe thousands of dollars right. that was on right. them. They probably went through some credit card stuff, all while still sitting there. That's a lot of decisions. I often tell people, I say, listen, you don't fall into stupid immediately. Mm -hmm. You make a number of decisions that lead you into that direction. I often say, like, if you're going to cheat on your spouse or something, like, what just happened? No, it did not. Yeah. yeah you started right, right. inappropriate conversations. Um, you started moving in directions. You had a number of decisions that led up to that, where at any right. point you could have gone, wait a minute, I probably shouldn't do this. Right. Gambling is no different. Here's what's funny, though, is that we do. People be like, well, we shouldn't have it because look at the people who did this. Once again. It turns into this hyperbole. It's always like, well, look at this. Okay, well, here's an example. Give me an example of a person that you know. Many times people cannot tell you a person that they know. We were at the casinos. We were there a lot right. because they were right there. Now, we would go to the casinos a lot, not necessarily to gamble, but because of the nightclubs and stuff that were there and right. the bars and stuff. So we would go to those type of things. Um, and it was funny because of all of the people that we always knew, they were always at the casinos. I didn't know a single person who got rid of their car because they couldn't do it and they lost their like none right. none right. now like my dad was there a lot and so he i mean maybe maybe my dad was the no is it like right. but my dad was there a lot and, and um like there were times where he'd be like yeah when sky was over and he lost you know what i'm saying like you'd hear about not but he didn't know them right it was kind of like oh that was happening over there yeah and, and i think that what happens is we we take the exception almost right we almost take the exception of where somebody's losing all their stuff we need to shut this down that's an exception Right. You don't make that the rule. You don't say, okay, now let's... But more importantly, when does it become other people's or the government's responsibility right. to prevent people from making bad decisions? Right. It's not up to the government right. to stop people and, from making and, bad decisions. And I think that's where the libertarian position is more consistent because we look at it and we say, look, life is full of bad decisions. Mm -hmm. A bad decision could be, you know what? I chose not to go and get some further education when I saw that, hey, either um, my advancement opportunities have ceased or when I started seeing like, hey, man, things things seem to be going. Yeah, that's you know, textile direction. Industry. Yeah. Right. Like, you, you know, I, I need to maybe do something. I maybe need to adapt, figure out some, you know, get a backup plan. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, if you think about it, how many movies have you seen where the young man is like, oh, I'm going to be on the sports ball team. And the parents are like, but you need to go to college. You need to have a backup plan. Like they're always. Always about, about, hey, so why? Always, I always, always. Right. And I'm like. People should have a backup plan, right? Like they should have some ideas. Like, I'm doing it right now. Right. Wait a minute. Your backup plan is podcasting? Yeah. This... Okay. So if pastoring doesn't work out, 
<laughs> no, what I'm saying is this. Podcaster. This, this isn't my goal. Sure that's a like, good plan. But no, that's what I'm saying. This isn't my plan. This, right. is, this is secondary stuff. Right. Like, hey, this works. Hey, so, this is great. I'll come and harass you every now and right. then. So, you know, and, 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 and so what I think we need to start doing is we need to, rather than say, and the, the point of my question wasn't to say, you know what? You're right, Dio. We should stigmatize people that make bad decisions right. in their career. You know <laughs> no, 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 no. What we should do is we should recognize that life is full of bad decisions and, 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 all over the place. And not to mention, is how many times would somebody and, else calls? Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. And, and rarely do the like you said the exceptions mm -hmm. actually embody a large they are the exceptions for a reason they're exceptions of the drug and heroin users yep. right they're the exceptions of the people that that gamble their their family's life away you know and don't have any not their life but you know their their, their savings and their you know you know their security and all that stuff they're the people that you know that cheat on their wives and all, like well okay maybe that might maybe. Be a little, <laughs> <laughs> that might happen a little bit more than it should but but effectively bad decision is all around us we need to start recognizing that bad decisions happen all over the place, and but the, I think the problem and is we can't stigmatize an entire right. idea who, because of that. Who determines that it's a bad decision? Right, there's the question because there have probably been people who've done extremely well because at some point right. they did something that looked like a bad decision. Right, it might have paid out beautifully. I mean, I'm sure that some of those poker players, the professional poker, the players, professional poker players, there's uh -huh. got to be a few that were like, you know. Maybe it wasn't an addiction per se, but maybe they made some bad decisions along the way, mm -hmm. and then eventually they got it worked out. Like imagine, like imagine when they came home, they Just told like their wife, in their "Career, yeah, that's what I'm saying." Might they, make they, bad decisions, but then eventually it work works it out. out. It, is that um, how many times have you quit a job? Like oh, I'm done, and, but it does pay out because something right. else does happen. Or imagine right. the guy, the professional gambler, who goes home to his wife and says, "You know, what? I'm going to take this on full time." Right. What? No, no, you can't take it off. And then it pays off. Right. You know, it has this thing. Yeah. So I think that we just have to be cautious in that the overarching problem inside of this is why do we think we get to determine right. what's best for somebody else's situations? Right. Which leads us right into prostitution. Right. That we that we have decided it's best for us to decide right. what's best for them. Right. As opposed to not knowing their situation, not knowing what they're going through. Right. We just make this blanket statement of right. this is horrible. Now, are we into prostitution now? Or? I mean, I've been into it. Wait a minute. That just, no, I, no, no, I, no, no, I would make it very clear that you said You that. asked if we were in it, and then I said Like, I'm an S topic. You, I don't oh. know what you meant. So, fun story. Nope. I don't like the way this starts. I, all right. So, I want to make this very clear right now that as we shifted topic into prostitution, and then the fact that DL said, hey, fun story. I want to make it very clear right now. I'm not involved in this. And I don't know that I will even partake in this conversation, but give it a try. It's awesome. It's a great story. Oh, okay. Prostitution may be part of the reason why I became a libertarian. Getting better yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keep going. A lot of libertarians have their Ron Paul moment. Right? They're like, man, when I first heard Ron Paul, when I knew I was, I was destined to be a libertarian, when I have my hooker moment. <laughs> All right, well, you can finish on this part. <laughs> and there's nothing sexual about it whatsoever. Ah, now he's interested. He's like, wait, wait, what? All right, give it a try. I used to listen to a lot of talk radio. Okay. Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, all mm -hmm. those guys, right? And I don't remember what I was listening to or what drove this idea. But I remember coming home to my ex-wife, and I'm in my 20s. And I came home and I said, you know what? How fitting is it this is a prostitution story and it's your ex-wife? So, so I came home and okay. I said... Prostitution should be legal. Just that random was, like that? Yeah, just random no idea. lead up. Just now, walked in the house. Hey, honey, you know what should be happening? Right. My, my ex-wife was... Um, I'm using my phone. Oh, look, what, what is going on? It's vibrating because somebody's trying to call me. Trying to you know what's funny? Of all the time of doing this, I didn't realize that was your actual, like, the phone that you use. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was just like this other phone yeah. that you had set up. So if people are hearing the vibration and they're definitely seeing it, you okay, saw it. It's over now. It's not an earthquake. Yeah. yeah okay. No. So I come home and I, so I, I don't know what drove the idea, but I came home and I was like, Hey, you know, I think prostitution should be legal. Now, mind you, my wife, uh, at the time and my wife now, neither one of them are very political. So it's not like I come home with some idea and I'm like, you know what? I think this. And they're like, wow, that's a really interesting philosophical idea. I would love to explore that. No, that is that's not how the conversation goes down. Okay. Usually they're not interested. All right. And this one perked up my ex-wife's ears. And she and I kind of got into a little bit of argument. And I'm oh, like, okay. And I'm like trying to figure out like why she's so angry at me. Like, why, why are you? Why are you so angry? I just tell you this cool idea, right? Turns out what I eventually I realized what she heard was 
I think prostitution should be legal because I might like to try it. Got it. Which was not what I was That's saying. not, right. Here's what dawned on me. I realized that as a single guy or a gal, you can go out to a bar and meet somebody else. And if you have persuasive words, you can go home with them. Okay. And then wake up the next day, do your walk of shame or get a number, whichever happens. And then go on about your life. And the government does not get involved one bit. That's true. Care. Right. right. Okay. As long as everything was consensual, nobody gets involved. The government doesn't come and say, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You weren't allowed. Tuesday nights are off limits for you because... Your last name We've doesn't re- begin with this letter. Mm-hmm. Like there was none of this, not you know, no crazy nonsense. They're like, hey, two consenting adults. So then it dawned on me, hey, if I said, man, that was really good. Here's a twenty. Right. All of a sudden, now it changes. Now it's prostitution. Okay. Or if I wasn't being so good with my words, and I just said, you know what? Let's just skip to the chase. How about I pay you a hundred bucks to go home with me? Right. Prostitution. So now all of a sudden, it's a crime. Okay. Even though the focal point of the activity has not changed, yeah, people, yeah, because when you went out on that any, date, your plan right. was, hey, right, uh-huh. like you're hoping to get lucky, okay, right, and so I, I realized that the only difference was money, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, why, why does that all of a sudden make it more of a problem, okay, right, because it's not any more of a problem than if two people happen to hook up, right, same things could happen. Marriage can be broken if you hook up with somebody when you're married, mm-hmm. right? Um, same thing if you go and visit a prostitute if you're married. Your marriage may break up, right? Um, you could uh, you could get AIDS or not AIDS specifically, but disease, right? right? You yep. can get disease from, from sleeping with the wrong person. Still could happen in either case. Uh, yeah, either way. Right? It doesn't change. Yeah. All right. Because uh, Pretty yeah. Woman movie is not real. Correct. Correct. Okay. So 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 I so it dawned on me. I was like, you know, and so this was like the first libertarian idea that I actually ever held was that, hey, you know what? Prostitution should be legal. Even though at the time I wasn't evangelical and I was like, ah, you know, it's probably a very bad idea to engage yeah, oh, in yes. prostitution. Yep. You know, you know. Um, so I was I didn't come home like socially liberal per se. But it started a conversation. You start going, yes. okay, so so let me tell we you. We did make up, by the way, and she understood what I was talking about. Like, and yeah, I'm not trying to go do this. Right, right. right. So, so now, now, which we'll, see, we'll get to in a second. So, but, so us, no, okay. So, here, so here's why it has a really bad lead in. So here's Maybe the thing. On purpose. So like I can, I can make the argument about, okay, if they want to go do that, that's fine. But here's the thing. So where our church is, mm-hmm. so I, I tend to, we are on a busy street here in town. Mm-hmm. Um, and the area directly behind our church is not a good, it's not a good area. It, it, it's known right. for a lot of things. Okay. okay? Um, and, and so I will tend to come out of our church park and I'll drive behind our church and go up that street and head out mm-hmm. the other way just because it's easier than fighting the traffic. Right. And so it's not uncommon that there are prostitutes out there walking right. the street. Now, let me just tell you, just because I have this thinking where people, if that's their thing, that's fine. I'm going to tell you right now. I keep driving. I do not make eye contact. I do not like, hey, listen, if you need help right now, I am not your Christian help because right. this does not look good for me right. to even think about having this conversation. Right. Right. Now, if there's ever something like that, I'm like, hey, I'll let my wife talk sure. to them and go deal with it. So I want to make it very clear that while I can be against it, if that's for you, right, that's for you. Right. And, and I, cause here's my question. How is prohibition working? Right. Like, let's let's be honest. All right. it's doing is it's driving it into dark places. It's not stopping it. Right. It's not stopping it. It's still very much right. happening. Nothing that's pushed into the black market mm-hmm. ever results in a better situation for the participants. Right. It always makes it worse. Mm-hmm. Whether it was prohibition, uh, prohibition of alcohol, uh, the drug war, prostitution, gambling. Yep. Right. Anything that's been pushed into drugs. Uh, well, I think I mentioned that drug war. Uh, anything that's been pushed into the black market always suffers worse uh, social effects. Oh, because then, then what? Then what if you just left it? Right. And because it's what I actually mentioned the other night. Is it, what what you do is you start taking people out of their environment right. into a questionable environment where right. that stuff is happening. Right. So once you've done that, now you've already made people on edge. Things start going right. questionable at that point because they're in an area they don't understand. Right. But that's what you force them to. Right. It doesn't stop them from doing it. It just makes it a little more dangerous to be doing it. Right. all it really does. Well, it also pulls out any opportunity to say, hey, there's a problem here and to shine a light. So let's take prostitution since we're talking about it. For mm-hmm. example, if a, if a woman is like, hey, for whatever reason has chosen to be a prostitute or a sex worker, well, just in general, sex worker, okay. right? And let's say that the work she does is uh, outlawed by the city, state, or federal government, whatever, all three of them. 
then she has decided to, to go into that line of business. She's going to continue. So now she's going to be working with people who are also working in the same way as her, illegally. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because remember, we're talking about it being banned. Right. So what happens is if she gets mistreated, she has she gonna no go to? recourse for action because in order for her to go to the government- She has to say, right guess now, what I was doing? And they go, right. oh, well, you're in trouble now. Right. Mm -hmm. So she has to snitch on herself in order to say, this person beat me. Mm -hmm. Right? Whether it was um, an employer, like a pimp, or whether it was a John or somebody that was partaking, right? So she, she, so she or just goes, she walked on the street looking for somebody, and right, she got. Well, it was another sex worker, right? Yep. Another sex, yeah, you know, like like you, you have to, they have to go and say, well, I was doing this particular activity when this person did this, whoever this person is, and it makes. And it now you just committed, to you just that. admitted to a crime, right? And here's the thing, it's cons what she was doing was at least consensual, right? Yes, because if a woman says, I would like to use my body in this particular way. She can. Mm -hmm. And we've already had plenty of conversations about, hey, if I want to use my body to go out and uh, garden, it's my body to do that with. Yep. If I want to use my body to go out and sell it to somebody else to- uh, We all do that with our jobs. For labor, for labor yes. or for sexual activity. Yep. Um, then it's my body to choose, mm -hmm. right? And um, But it's also my body to say, you can't assault me. Right. So, you know, if you're the pimp and you're like, hey, you didn't bring me enough money, whatever, right? Like- I'm, I'm not really consenting to be hit. No, no, right, no. Right. No matter, no matter what it is. I, I know people like, might be like, "Well, just leave the situation. You're consenting." Like, no, no, no. That's nonsense. Right. right. It's garbage. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like there's any number of reasons we're not going to get into all the details. You know, all the nuance. But, but people don't consent. Nobody's in the moment. Nobody's like, you know what? I need to be. I need to have the shit beat out of me. Like nobody says that. Right. Right. Like that's so, so you know. Uh, so I think it's nonsense. So I think what we do is we force people who are going to be in this in this space mm -hmm. to operate in the worst environment possible, yeah, right. rather than bringing it out and saying, you know what, let's let's bring it out in the open, and let's offer the same protections that we offer anybody else. Right. If I go work at McDonald's, I was just saying, my yeah. employer can't smack me with a spoon. Okay. Right. You know, a ladle. Right. Do you think McDonald's has ladles? I don't know. Like, like you understand the, the connection you just made was like McDonald's, and you mean because all those uh, freshly mashed potatoes that they're serving back there with the gravy and like, what do you think's happening back there? What, okay, okay. Is, what is going on? Sound a little detached from reality. Okay? A little. Oh, so hang on. Let me see if I got this right. Then hang on. So you fully make the argument about the pros of prostitution, but you don't understand how McDonald's works. So. All right, so here, so here's here's one of my questions right, right here. Do we have a problem with the openness of prostitution? Do you think it's just the fact that if we feel like we we say it and we make it like we're normalizing it, that we're making it okay? Because once again, I, I believe Who's it can be we? just we have a problem? society. Oh, society. Honestly, in my opinion, I think that society has a problem with um, doing their own work. Doing, doing their, their own, own like, like dealing with problems their own selves. So um, when I was growing up in Dayton, Ohio, there was a problem in a certain area. And I think this is actually a good, a, a good point to make because um, Pastor Tubb is a pastor. So therefore, if you are a prostitute and you come to his church, he's going to, you know, he's going to be like, look, let me counsel you in getting out of Get this out of this. Of yes. This and there's a, there's a great and, group here in town. And, that I'd be like, hey, you need and, to talk and, to them. And he, and if somebody says, do you think that Jesus wants me to be a prostitute? His answer will be no, every nope. time, all day long, mm -hmm. every day, right? So that's his answer as a Christian, as a pastor. So he can totally be against it while simultaneously saying, it's not my job to use the government to force you to stop right. doing it right. or to punish you for mm -hmm. doing it. God will do that when you die. Yep. That will get taken. That, that, it that will, will get handled. But, but again, we're, this is the distinction between his personal life mm -hmm. and the life that he is working to interact and use government to get involved. Yeah, it's, 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 here's the thing. Like I, I often, I often say that. Listen, if you want people to act like Christians, right? Okay, um, what you do is you make disciples, not laws. Right. You don't leave it. To, you don't leave it to the government to do it. Right. So he, here's the thing. Like, do you think it bothers people that the women are just? At, and we always say women, but men do it too. Correct. But um, but do you think it, it it bothers people that when they just see them out there walking the streets, out in their neighborhoods and stuff along those lines? Do you think I, that's what's bothering them I, the I most? Think people want to. I, I, I'm not sure if it's that it's that seeing it bothers them, but I think that there is a problem that people don't want to 
go and do the work. They don't want to be the one to sit down with the woman and say, okay, let's talk about your daddy issues and figure this out okay, and get you out. But, but right? hold on. They would rather just push it away under the rug and use government to do it. That's my opinion, right? No, but what, what I'm saying, though, do you... So but, I think that's the problem. Do you think, I don't know what that... But do you think that some people could be like, listen, I don't care if that's what they want to do, but I don't want them walking down my street doing it. Um... Because let me be honest with you, I don't listen. I, I have my. I don't want them walking down my street doing it. Right. Let's be honest. You probably don't want them roaming out here. Right, right. And I, I so I'm so, not sure. So honestly. here's what I was, here's what I'm getting at. Then, do you think more people are open to the idea of like kind of like what they do in Nevada, where it happens in that house in that building right there? Um, do you think do you think that that's part of it? Because that's the only state that has technically legalized it. No, I I I think that people. I think there's a lot of people that want to see a particular type of society and they will use government to try to get it as far as... You know what's even funny? Even if they're inconsistent. Because there are people that will use government and then use prostitutes as well. Yeah, here's... Right. 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 Like, like, here's the thing. is watch the drug addict talk about, we shouldn't have prostitutes. Well, I don't think we want drug right. addicts running around here doing things either. You, you know, watch the guy who's um cheating on his wife. Like, we don't want those prostitutes. Wait, wait, wait. We were talking about a society that functions right. in a certain way. That's no different at but that point. So, do as you... far as why they, I don't know, but I think that the reason that we get these laws, uh -huh. I believe, is because people don't want to put in the actual hard work to engage their fellow man to make to, to improve their lives. The usual, right? You're saying this just because... falls under the same as the other categories. <clears throat> yes. Okay. And 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 but but it does happen because like when I was I was getting ready to say when I lived in Dayton there was a, a church that said hey there's a problem with prostitution on this um, corner mm -hmm. and it was close to my house not like really close it was like Maybe a mile away. Maybe, oh, not, okay. maybe not. Maybe not, not even that far. Right. Well, you know, I could, it was within walking distance for sure. Okay. And um, so what they did was they went out and they, the, the, it was church people, and they took folding chairs, folding lawn chairs, mm -hmm. and they went out there, plopped them down, and then sat there at night. Just sat there to ruin the business. I was going to say, that's usually what that would do. Uh -huh. and, and, and the idea was to drive them away. Oh, but and that's all yeah. it did. Right, it right. just drove that, that, them that, to another area. Right, all you did was push the problem to somebody else. Yeah. So I feel like now, now that is a little bit better, slightly, I think, than um, than using government because at least you are doing doing it. something. You are saying I am going to go and do this work to push this element away from my neighborhood. But I so, think okay. I think that people have a problem that they want. They want a particular. Uh, people have their vision of what it. With, with the but, neighborhood, uh, with the white picket fence and the dog name spot, right? Looks and like. even if their lifestyle doesn't reflect that, they kind of want right. a version of that. Yes. And so, so what it comes down to then is basically, I don't want this around my children. Correct. Like I, I don't want my kids to be walking home from school and have to walk next walk down the street right. with the prostitute. They at don't want to walk in between prostitutes, right? You go, you know, or or, or the idea is that listen, for younger kids, let's be honest, if you have younger children. You don't want to have to have that conversation with them. Right. You don't want to. I'm sorry. Right. At a five year old, you don't want to explain prostitution to them. Right. You shouldn't have to. Right. So that's what I'm getting at. So what if? Do you think it's more of a thing of let's get it out from the darkness and the bad neighborhoods or wherever that happens to be, and let's put it into that building over there. And now we know, hey, that strip of streets in all of this city, that's. Right there. That's right. where all those things happen. Um, that now we go, hey. I think that would be I, a better idea. Right. That's what I'm saying. Now right. they know, hey, in order to not be around it, right. you can't. You go over I there. Mean, just add it and, to the list of zoning. Like right, That's what I'm saying. And, zoning and so, F. Is and so now if you get caught, it's kind of like the whatever. idea that even if you decriminalize, you know, weed, for example. But if you get caught with it in, under the wrong situations, you still get fined or, right. you know what I'm saying? It could be the same thing. It right. could be, hey, listen. We have a place for y'all to be right. doing this. You're outside of that place. You're, you're right. going to get a ticket for this. Right. You can't just be out here doing this. Right. And then we go from there. It's like, yeah. Do we think that helps I think solve it, part of the problem? Oh, I think it would. I think it would go a lot further than what we've got going on right now, right? So, like I, I suggested, like, you know, you add like a zoning ordinance, yeah. you know, where you say, look, this is the zoning category and this is for, you could even say gambling and prostitution, like, Hey, this we're gonna have so many areas zoned, and if you're outside of this area, engaging in it in a particular it's, way, yep. right? Like, you know, what what I uh, so for example, if you had a uh, a prostitute who was making a sex worker who was making house calls, okay, I don't know that I would necessarily have a big issue with that because it's I still mean, not out in the open. It's, it's still not out in the open, and it's not really all that different than having a maid service. Like, you know, but you had a maid come, and, and you would never know. What you know, unless you watch her pulling out all the cleaning supplies, 
just by looking at the car, mm -hmm. just by seeing somebody that you wouldn't necessarily know what her purpose is. Right. Without seeing the particular stuff. It could just be you have a trashy girlfriend. Right. right. Uh, it doesn't have to be a prostitute. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, right. So it's not a matter of right. that. It's okay. You know, right. you know what I'm saying? So we can't base off of looks anyway. Right. And so if you said, look, prostitution is legal in this city. Here are the zoning areas. If you're a house call version of the, you know, the sex worker, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, you can't have any nudity on your car so that people, they don't right. know, you know, like, and I know this is going to rub some libertarians raw because I'm like, hey, you're still using government. I get that. And um, maybe. But I think what, I bet you if you ask them matter. what's the bigger issue, I think they'd right. be like, okay, fine. I won't put that on my car, right. but I can go do this now and I'm not going to get arrested. Right. Ask them which one and, they prefer. Right. And, and not only that, if I go to somebody's house and they mistreat me, they assault me. I now, I am a victim of a actual real crime. I ha I can report that and say right. I was here. This is what I was doing. But we know that. Yep. And this person assaulted me. Here's the bruise on my face. You know, whatever. Um, Listen, I've seen enough and, criminal minds to know hey, yeah. things go sideways like that. You better be careful. They do. <laughs> and you know, because I think first and foremost, the thing that we need to, I, I think the first and foremost thing that we need to recognize is that one, people can use their bodies however they want. Right. Okay, so if somebody wants to use their body as a sex worker, or if they want to use their body to, you know, flip around cards, and and hopefully win, you know, a lot of money that's mm -hmm. not worth nearly as much as it used to be. Right. Yeah. If they if they want to do that, that's their choice. They, you know, so once we get past that point, then we can start saying, all right, how do we implement it? Ideally, in my most ideal utopian world, okay. there would not be a government that would be governing this, and we would figure it out as a society. However. We are here. That is here. What happens? We got. We got to work our way to there. Right. And I think. So between, I think libertarians always forget yep. that. I think that was like, in no, between, we want it like this. We like, yep. no. Yep. Can we work between, to this? Let's 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 make uh, let's make it so that when people actually are a victim of a crime, they they have a recourse. Right. Because I'm not going to sit here and fight for this utopia, while women, and it's predominantly women, while women mm -hmm. are out there, um, having the crap beat out of them by somebody. Whomever that somebody is, right, right, like, and, and and no opportunity to to seek recourse and say, hey, this person, you know, has, uh, this person was assaulting me mm -hmm. for whatever crazy reason, right? Like, I would, I, I want to fix that problem. Okay, like that's the, you know, that that's first and foremost. I want society to start recognizing that, hey, you have a right to your own body, unless you're married. Then of course, I do not. Yeah, right. Then she has right, <laughs> right. But 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 but, yeah. I, but I think that once again. Mm -hmm. What we tend to do as society as a whole, mm -hmm. we, we jump to these extremes. Right. We jump to, oh, this is what's going to happen. But yep. is it though? And I think there's a concern about normalizing. Now, yes. there is, that is a bit of an argument in the Libertarian Party. I, yep. There are people that say, look, we need to normalize it. So let me, let's let's, let's clear up some definitions. Uh, yeah, right. I'm clear. Go ahead. So uh, decriminalize. That means, um, uh, I'm trying to make, make sure I get my words. You got decriminalization. You've got legalization. And then you've got normalization. So let's give a definition of all three. Okay. Of these real Which quick. one are you going with first? So decriminalize. That's going to be, and I always keep, I'll make sure I get these right decriminalize and legalize. Yes, decriminalize means you can simply do it, period. There's no laws on the books, right? It's just no longer criminal. Legalize means that it's under some sort of statutory uh, limitation. You can do it except for here. Like, or, or like for drugs, you can only have an X amount with right. you. Those type right. of things. Yep. So what I think we need to do is we need to decriminalize sex work. So okay. It's no longer criminal. You can put things under statute, statute and say it's not criminal. I guess it, technically, I guess you'd be... I guess it would be legalizing. We'd be legalizing. I, I guess I fall under the. Yeah, legal. no, I think we. I think we. I yeah, think I, I think, fall I under fall legalizing. Under. Like we're gonna, we're gonna let you, right. but we're gonna kind of put some guidelines to it. We're gonna kind of, but you, you know, see, that's what Nevada does. Right. I mean, they, they, they have health inspectors. Right. You know, they have they, they get tested, right. and then they, they have a purpose. Right. They're, they're saying, hey, if we're gonna do this, that's yep. fine, but we're not just gonna make it crazy. We're anything. Right. Let's control things and a then little bit. Normalizing is oh. where it gets dicey. Okay, so normalizing. No, normalizing is where it gets dicey for libertarians. Yes, because. Um, and because there, there, there's kind of two different crowds here for sure in the normalizing category. And the normalizing means that we not only say that, hey, you're allowed to use your own body as you want, but we say it's perfectly normal. Like, so let's raise our I, daughters to be a prostitute. Right. And I can assure you, I have a son right now. I will not be raising him to go and visit prostitutes. If nope. I had a daughter, I would be raising her so that she would not be a sex worker. At the end of the day, if she ended up being, if I had a daughter and she became a sex worker, I would still love my daughter. That's what a good dad does. 
period, even though they make bad choices. And now, my son will make bad choices and I will let, love let him me, no Let me explain what. to you. If I had a daughter and she came home to me and told me she was a sex worker and I can go, hey, I get what you're doing. I get, okay, but we're stopping this today. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm sure, not, sure. I'm not going to sit here and go, right. well, I love you. Like, I'm not, not going to use the government to do it. No, no. Right. I'll be like, I'll be That's like, the I'll be like, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get you some help. Why didn't you tell me? Right. We can help you. I, like, I'm going to be honest with you. And I think that this is what we have to understand. There will not come a time when I'm suggesting that women should go, hey, you know what? If you don't think you have any other marketable skills, go be a prostitute. Right. Like, I'm, right. I'm not going right. to do that. And right. I don't think we should do that. Right. I think there are so many other options besides right. prostitutes. Constitution I that think, you can and, get and, into, and I think uh, I think that as a rule of thumb, um, it is. I, I think it's contrary to human, to natural human behavior, and I don't mean to do it. I mean the results of it. What do you mean? I, I, so a lot of people are like, oh, you can totally be a sex worker and it's fine. It's not going to harm you. You'll be emotionally, you know, well, you know, in a good place. Blah blah blah. I don't. I disagree. I right. think that I think that one most women start out in an emotionally bad place. Mm -hmm. I think most women only get to a worse emotional place, right? Now, there are I do believe that there are some people for whom it I guess fits is is an appropriate word. Right. Like it fits their the, the, the they have the mental mental um they are in a mental place where it works for them. Right? They are not necessarily broken women per se. I right. I believe that. You may disagree and that's fine. But I, I I believe that there are some but I think those are the exception, right? Yeah, they're definitely and, not the normal ones. Right. right. And, and so I look at it and I say, it is okay. I, so I am not on the normal, normalizing bandwagon. Right. right. And I say, no, it is okay to be against it. So while you simultaneously say, I'm not going to lift a single finger to use government against you for it. Right. But that doesn't mean that I have to support it. If my wife came home and was like, look, Think I'm we need to pay the light bill. And no, 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 I'm, no. I think there's I'm, other options or if here. She said, I'm going to be a sex worker. I'm going to be a cam girl or, you know, whatever. You a know, what? A cam girl, camera girl. You need to get on the internet more. No, I probably, no, maybe I don't. <laughs> Never no, mind. I, okay. You'll, you'll understand where that word comes from in a moment. Oh, no. Um, no, no, no. Did nothing I, bad. Should I leave again? Nothing, nothing. Yeah, just, bad. oh, okay. Jeez, all right. All right. So uptight. Jeez. Okay. You got to be more liberal like me. No, just I, I, I don't think I, I do. Teeth. <laughs> I teeth. But so I, I, I think that there's um, I think there's a place for people to, you know, because conservatives, are, I think they get really concerned if they don't uh, if they don't use the force of government, then that says something about them or that that's the, them giving permission. I'm like, no, but, no, you cannot give permission and say, like, look, daughter, don't do that. I will be very upset. I yep. will be very disappointed if you do this or son. Right. I think mm -hmm. it should be both, actually. Yeah. But, you I know, think... child. I will be very disappointed if you engage in this kind of behavior. Um, but I'm not going to use the government. I'm not going to ask the government to throw you in jail for doing it. Uh, right. Because here's the I thing. I just may not invite we you to Christmas. The, right. But I think that there's the issue right there. I would. Once again, it's, it, it tells of the bigger problem. The bigger problem is that we just want government mm -hmm. to fix all of the problems right. as opposed to us getting involved ourselves right. and raising our kids and right. raising our families and being an active part of other people's right. lives. We just like make that, oh, I'm going to call. No, no, no. Here's an idea. Right. If you think that's happening, rather than want more laws to make it so but they're still doing it, go help them. Right. And, and that's why I said, if I had a daughter, she came to me and she goes, hey, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'd be like, oh, I get it because that's a great, no. The first thing I'm going to do is say, you're done today. Right. We will do whatever we have to do to stop right. this from happening. I will get involved. Right. Not the government. Right. I'm not going to, but I think I said that's indicative of the bigger problem. So many times what we're finding now, especially, is when there's something going on that we don't like, there should be a law. They should arrest right. them. They, should, they, they want to make right. government. Here's yep. the problem is once government gets something, right. they don't give and, it back. And this goes back to my earlier criticism, which I wasn't doing a very good job of verbalizing, which is I think that people, they don't want to do the heavy lifting. So they always farm it out to government. Yes. You stop it. You make it illegal so that I don't have to do any of the hard work. Okay. So maybe my son doesn't grow up to have any, uh, engage in any social activities that I really disapprove of. Right. Like nothing serious. Right. Right. And, um, okay, great. Lucky me. That means maybe I have time to work with somebody who does. Somebody does, right. You know, maybe a parent who, 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 who wasn't so A parent. Yeah, and be like, or, hey, maybe, or maybe an adult, you know, like, like I, wanna, I don't want to say a child, but like somebody's, somebody who's engaged, in, you know, maybe, maybe I work with somebody who's got a gambling problem. And I say, look, I don't have a gambling problem. I can help you, maybe. Right, mm -hmm. maybe you know, it's not, not nothing. Nothing's a guarantee. Yeah, like I said, I, I think we need to go out and we need, we need to help our fellow man. I think yes. that's the core of libertarianism. I think yeah, I think li that, libertarians we kind of believe help. that. Like let, let me help you. 
Mm -hmm. Right. We get out there and we help them because I think the, the stigma that libertarians have is that we will just step over, you know, drug addled hookers on the street as we walk by and go, well, that's capitalism. No, no. <laughs> I mean, there might be some, but there, those, but that's happening those, right now. Anyway, those some people that would be doing it are doing it now. Yep. Uh, and they will do it under any system that we have, right? That they're not going to lift a finger unless you physically force them to do it. So I think that the idea of libertarianism is to say, look, first of all, we acknowledge that every person has the right, the inherent right to do with their own body what they choose. That doesn't mean that I have to agree with it. And it also means that I can oppose it and I can help somebody but and say, look, they, I think you're going down the wrong path. They, I'm willing to put in the work because I'm not willing to, to have government do it for you, which is only going to make the problem worse. There, there's the idea if you remove the stigma that they can come to you and go, listen, I've been doing this and I don't want to do this anymore. That there's there, I think that it makes it might actually draw more people out of it because right now they're just so shoved back in that they can't. It's hard to come out and be like, "Hey, this is what I'm doing," because they get cast to a certain type of thing and pushed aside further. Right. Whereas I think if if you start saying, "Hey, listen, this is what's happening. We see it going on, and, and we're not gonna," and we just kind of be like, "Okay, they can come to us now and go, mm -hmm. you know what? Okay, I've been doing this, and right. I realize I don't want to do this." Right. That now because it's no longer like, "Oh, you're the horrible prostitute. You're the horrible even gambling." Right. You know, people don't want to come out and admit that they have a gambling problem. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? When so, there's a stigma, nobody that that stigma is the first line of defense for getting somebody out of it. Right. They have to admit it to people. Yep. They have to say, and, "I'm this person." Yeah, and most times they don't want to deal with that alone because people will anonymous? cast you away. What do they say when they go to a meeting? I've never been to one, but I've seen them on TV, so clearly that's how it works. Yeah, right. <laughs> they get in there and they're like, "Hi, I'm John. I'm an, I'm alcoholic. an alcoholic." Every single time, and I've heard alcoholics they they'll say, "I, you know, it's it it's incumbent on me to always say I'm an alcoholic." This is who I am. Now, I, you could argue and debate all, but the point is, but look what that did. They, but they look, acknowledge but look. it up front yep. to people. So it's out on the table. You know, somebody comes to my house. Because, but hold on. I say I'm an alcoholic. You know right? that at one point in time, alcoholism had its own stigma to right. it. You know what I'm saying? But look what you kind of does. Yeah, a little bit. Well, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? But now they have groups that actively say, right. well, come see us and we can right. help you. Yes. So because that stigma has been off right. of alcohol. They're like, right. oh, they're like, oh, this is a problem. Right. You know, so we need to deal with yep. this. And, and you might see commercials on TV. Oh, you got an alcohol problem? Call this number. Yeah. Call so imagine website. now, oh, are number. you caught up as a sex worker? Right. We have programs now. Come right. see us. Right. Rather than if I come see you, I'm going to get right. arrested now because I just admitted to doing something that's right. illegal. So right. now the there might actually be more help right. inside of this. Now, uh, now, something went through my mind. I'm going to okay. bring something up that's going to just hurt you really badly here. Maps. Remember, if you, if you watch our show, when we were talking about maps, the person that was pushing this idea of maps, and I'm not going to go into it in, in detail, but it's it's a, called a minor attracted person. It's this new age way of saying pedophile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this researcher was suggesting the very same thing that we're suggesting. They're like, hey, we need to normalize this so that people will come out of the woodworks and receive the help they need. The difference between what they were suggesting and what I am suggesting, or what Tub and I are both mm -hmm. suggesting, is that under our view, Society has no obligation to anything other than non-interference. That is it. They can say, you disgusting sex worker. They can still say that. Yes. It's okay. Yep. I mean, maybe you might have, you got to make You, you might drive past argument. them and. Right. You can make a moral argument, all right, right? Um, and say, okay, in, in our church, we don't think that way, whatever. We, th we think more positively of people that they're hurting and broken or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make those kinds. Of, but ultimately... We are saying under the libertarian banner, if you want, you do not have to normalize it and say that it is okay. You can say it is not okay. The only thing is you can't use government. And, but I also think that I, I think that in so all honesty, the, uh, that of those two, but I, I think that also inside of that too is that we're talking about adults, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, so I think yes. to me that's a like right. I think I think if anybody comes and says, "Hey, listen, you know, she's 16 years old." She goes, no, she. Oh, no, she right. does not. Right. No, this is not. There. That's she what cannot I'm saying. Consent. And, and so I right. think that that's the other side. And I, right. and I think that we tend to, if we make the stand, like, well, let's just make prostitution okay. We think that that people open that up to think, oh, kids, and no, no, right. no, no, right. no. I'm still talking about consenting adults. Right. And so, even if you say, "Hey, we're gonna put it in that house." Right. That house, and you say, yep. hey, listen, maybe they got to be 21. Maybe it's not right. even 18. Maybe yep. it's 21, and we're going right. to do this. And we start, because our goal is to, you know what? We don't want you in this. No, right. matter, no matter how cool we make it look over in their house and what they're doing, right. we don't want you to do this. Right. 
How do we keep you? And and so this is kind of similar to the drug issue that we talked about Mm -hmm. uh, in one of the episodes where we were talking about like, hey, you wouldn't want your son to grow up to be a drug dealer, an illegal drug dealer per se, right? right? Um, I wouldn't. Even like (laughs) farmer's sister. Yeah, right. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. You know, uh, and 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 I say illegal just meaning like somebody who's out there in the shady parts of town packing a gun because you know who knows somebody might try to rob him. Yep. You know that kind of environment. We don't want our children in that environment. Um, You know. Would I have a problem if my son grew up and had a, um, a dispensary? No, not really. It's respectable. You know, people come in. They, legit business. Yes, yeah, legit business, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I would have no issue with that. When it comes to social topics, I think the very important thing for us to really communicate is that you do not have to accept it. So I th- And I think that's where society is kind of going wrong is they're merging them together. They're saying, well, if I, if I let it be legal, mm-hmm. that's tacit acceptance on my part and i don't want that so since they don't want to accept it as good behavior they criminalize it yep and i'm saying you cannot accept it and keep it from being criminal you know you know, and, and recognize that hey people make poor choices yes in the same way that some people did chose not to uh further their career and maybe basically mm-hmm. push their own selves out of the market at some point and, and, and are struggling yeah. People make choices. I I think we have to understand that not everybody holds our same values. Correct. Like I, I cannot expect the world. I would you know the church world. That's what mm-hmm. we've heard. The world. Right. I cannot expect the world to act like Christians. Right. Like I can't go get mad when people who don't know Jesus as Savior when they don't act like we do. Right. They don't know any better. They're just right. doing what they do. We've all been through that in life. Right. Maybe we didn't do. Maybe we weren't prostitutes, but we all did things contrary to the values that we have now. Right. So what we have to understand is that not everybody believes the way that we do. Right. And so I, just because I think I think that my my values are higher than what they're doing. Right. We don't know their situations. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know why they're doing it. Right. So you know what? Why don't we allow them to figure out what's best for them? Right. And and I think that our problem is that we've come into this point where as Christians and stuff like that, we are saying, well, well, my way is better. Yes, I do believe my way is better. Right. Like I, I'm going to stay by that all the time. Right. My way is better. Yep. But... If you don't agree to my way, I don't have the right to force you right. into my way. Right. I want to present or punish you. Yeah, punish you. Like I want to present my way that you look at my way and go, that's better. Right. And that you want in also. Right. To me, that's how we do it. Not just with Christianity, but how we say, okay, listen, if you think sex work is okay, I'm gonna tell you it's not. Well, let me tell you why it's not. Right. And then let me have that conversation with you. Right. That maybe you then go, hey, you know what? It's not. Right. But until you come to that point, I, I don't have any right, once again, to put government stop you from doing right. that. Right. And then let me just kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll start wrapping Wrap this it up. Wrap it up, dude. Wrap, wrap it, up. it up. Close it up. Two We're going to be on time. We're going to be on time. We're gonna, okay. You know, um, think of it this way. Would you rather it be illegal and pushed into the dark elements where you don't have to deal with it? Or would you rather be it out in the open where people can get the help that they need for those whom need who need help, right? The people that need help, not all of them necessarily need help, but some of them do for sure, at least. At a minimum, some. For, for others, they might say all of them need help, but at a minimum, at least some need help and are not getting it. So would you rather they get help because it's out of the open, mm-hmm. or would you rather them continue in the, the destitute life that they're struggling in? So I want to end up on one thing here. I'm going to promote a book. I'm Pro- promoting this book. We're already promoting a book. I'm promoting a book. I'm going to promote it. Pastor Tubbs probably not going to promote it, and that's fine. Okay? Again. So am I checking to... out now? I can. No, you don't have to check. You don't have to stay here. I'm... So No, this... I'm not leaving. Do it. I guess I don't even have to so, listen. So this is a book called Sexual Liberty. It's by Chase, and I can never remember how to say the last name. Takach, I think. So if she's ever watching, um, you can go ahead and correct me. It's called Memoirs of a Sex Worker's Fight for Freedom. Uh, she is a libertarian. And um, I think she's actually changed her name, but I don't want to get on all that. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, she wrote a book. It's not very long. It's only about uh, 50, 60 pages here. And it's kind of like a memoir and kind of gives you a little bit up to speed. So if you don't want to get on the internet and learn about what a cam girl (laughs) is, you can read this nifty little book and it'll give you an idea. She talks about it from a libertarian perspective. She talks about some of the challenges that um, sex workers face and some of the issues that arise with it being illegal, why it should be legal. Um, talks about the Libertarian Party's position on sex work in your individual She was in rights. it? She was in it, though. She still is. Oh, she's still in it? Still is. Oh, okay. So, by the way, um, um, if, if you're wanting to maintain 
the you know your your search history go to amazon and search for this sexual liberty chase akach um, be careful if you go to google you might find some results that you were not looking for so it's fair now, warning. now here's what i'm gonna add to that real quick once again not condoning right but you know what who has the better information on here's what's going on here's how to help it here's what the problems are right. behind and there's somebody who's actually in it right Right. So if you want to learn a little bit more about sex work and just in general, without without wading through the unfortunate results that you might get on okay. Google, then I would recommend this book. Um, it's an it's, it's it's an easy read. It's you know it's like 50, 60 pages, and you could probably read it in a day. Um, and then you will be more enlightened about sex workers' uh, position. Now she takes a little bit stronger position than I do, and that's okay. But you will learn a little bit more from an actual sex worker who is also a libertarian. And with that. We will close this out and see you next time. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.